again, you guys. We are on our next chapter of our read aloud. I've got a reading buddy again with me. Jack, do you want to come and read with us? Or, okay, you're going to stay there. All right, I've got, I've got a um, four-year-old cameraman, so um, pray for me. <laughs> All right, so this week um, we are on Chapter 7, and it is called Another Theft. So remember what happened at the end of Chapter 6? The man in sunglasses was, was going, following Benny. Yes, was following Benny. What's going to happen? I don't What's going to happen? And Violet went to go run after him. All right. So, another theft, chapter 7. All right. Violet raced past glass walled rooms filled with mannequins, her heart beating in her throat. Where was Benny? The dim corridors and narrow passages seemed to have swallowed him up. The shadowy halls and smoky glass made everything look scary and confusing. Nothing was what it seemed to be. Violet rounded a corner and nearly bumped into her own reflection. Benny, she cried out anxiously. Where is he? Henry said, running up to her. Jesse, Violet, and Admira were with him, looking pale and frightened. I don't know, Violet said. She shook her head hopelessly. Oh my goodness, there's one of them, Jesse hissed. She pointed to a man in sunglasses moving swiftly down the corridor. It was impossible to tell where he was heading. Jesse, you and Myra head to the right, Henry said urgently. Come on, Violet, you and I will go the opposite way. After a terrifying few minutes, Violet spotted a small, familiar figure sitting on the floor. Benny! She rushed up to him and hugged him. Are you okay? Of course I am. He looked surprised. I just got tired of looking at dresses, and I'm hungry too. He stood up and dusted himself off. May we go eat lunch now? Oh, Benny, you're safe, Jessie said as she raced up to her brother and gave him a bear hug. Benny was more confused than ever. Why was everyone making such a big deal? Even Admira patted him on the head and whispered that she hoped he wasn't frightened. Why would he be frightened? I've got a great idea, Benny, Henry said looping his arm over his brother's shoulders. Why don't we have a picnic lunch on the grass? Whoopee, Benny hooted. 20 minutes later, they had settled on a quiet spot in front of the Museum of Natural History. It was a sunny day and some children were playing on Uncle Beasley's, a life-size fiberglass model of a dinosaur. That's a triceratops, Benny um, said confidently. I have a picture of him in my dinosaur book. It's okay. No, it's okay. He munched on the hot dog and french fries, and they bought from they bought from a vendor. Can I play on him? As soon as you finish lunch, Jesse began and broke off laughing. Benny had polished off his hot dog in two giant bites and was already scampering across the grass. Stay where we can see you, Henry called. He watched as Benny joined some other children in a game of tag and then turned to the girls. I think we need to talk. And Myra ducked her head, her long, dark hair hiding her expression. Violet had, had been surprised when she had skipped the hot dogs and ordered an unusual-looking food on pita bread. She said it was called um, falafel and was popular in the Middle East countries. Those men in the museum, and Myra, Henry continued, you saw them this time, didn't you? And Myra looked up, her eyes wide. Yes, but I think you're making too much out of this. But they were after Benny, Violet objected. You saw what they were up to. I never saw them chase Benny, Admira said quietly. I think Benny just wandered away, and the men happened to disappear at the same time. She shrugged. You put four and four together. That's why you jumped to the wrong conclusion. For a moment, no one said anything, and then Jessie giggled. Four and four? Don't you mean two and two? And Myra flushed. Of course I mean two and two. When I am nervous, I forget I forget what I was going to say. She seemed so upset that Violet leaned over and patted her arm. Don't worry, Admira. Nobody thinks that you have anything to do with those men. Admira smiled gratefully. I really do think that you're all worrying too much. Those men would never hurt Benny or any of you. That's the last thing on their minds. Everyone went back to eating lunch, but Jessie stared at Admira. How could she know what the men in sunglasses were thinking or planning? 
Was Henry right? Did Myra know more than she was telling? And what a funny mistake to make, saying four and four instead of two and two. After lunch, everyone headed to the west building of the National Gallery of Art. I'd like to see the Impressionist paintings, Amira said. They're always so pretty and full of sunlight. Minutes later, the Aldens found themselves in front of a colorful landscape painted by Monet. A guide was explaining the painter's style to a group of tourists, and Violet edged toward forward. Suddenly, she spotted a familiar figure in the middle of the crowd. Isn't that John Sutterforth from the B and B? She whispered to Jessie. Jessie stood on tiptoe and peered over her sister's head. I think so. I bet he spends a lot of time in art galleries since he's an artist himself. The Aldens listened for a few minutes as the guide described how the artist made the vivid colors come alive on the canvas. But why do they call it impressionism? A voice interrupted. Violet recognized the speaker. It was John Sutterer. That's a good question, the guy said. He gestured to the painting in front of him. The style was very unusual for the time because Monet painted his impression of the scene instead of trying to make it look realistic. Henry listened intently, frowning. If John Sutterer was an artist, wouldn't he already know that? The group moved on and the Aldens stayed behind to admire some paintings of ballerinas by, by another artist. Violet looked troubled, her mind going back to John <laughs> Sutter. What had he been doing in room six the other day? Should she have spoken up even though the traveler's checks had reappeared? Much later that evening, the Aldens were relaxing over a game of cards when Mrs. Pearson appeared. This is terrible, she said, sinking into a dining room chair. She cupped her chin in her hands and looked as though she were going to cry. What's wrong, Violet said, jumping to her feet. She liked Mrs. Parsons and hated to see her upset. I'm missing some money from the wall safe, she said quietly. This time, it's a large sum of money. Remember, the answer to an addition problem is called the sum, so it's a large amount of money. The wall safe? Jessie asked. Where is it? It's in the front hall. She shook her head helplessly. I don't know how anyone managed to break into it. I even had a security mirror installed so I could keep an eye on it. What's a security mirror? Benny piped up. Mrs. Parsons turned to Benny. It's that round mirror on the wall, Benny. It's angled a certain way so that I can get a good view of the hall, even when I'm sitting behind the reception desk. Did they smash the lock on the safe, Henry asked. Mrs. Parsons shook her head. No, so that means they must have known the combination. She sighed and put her hands in her lap. I'm the only one who knows the combination. Don't worry, Mrs. Parsons, Henry said reassuringly. We'll get to the bottom of it. That's right, Jessie added. You can count on us. Later, Jessie wandered down the front hall to take a look at the safe. It was built into the wall a gray metal box with a combination lock in the middle. As far as she could tell, it didn't have any scratches or dents on it. Someone must have known the combination, she decided. But who? There were so many suspects, a whole boarding house full of people who would want to steal from Mrs. Parsons. She was still thinking about that theft later that night when she heard a familiar soft rumble outside the front door. She peeked out through the living room drapes and saw the long black limousine creeping down the street. Ooh, that is the end of our next chapter. I will see you all next time and we'll see what happens can I, next. Can I, push I love you. Off? Bye. Can I push yeah. off the button? Mm -hmm. Push the button, Jack. Thank you, cameraman.